pick whatever AD carry he wants to, and he will pick it early on. And we, as long as he gets a hyper carry, we have seen how good he is. So, no change here for Rocket. Blue side casted in ban. TF, Orianna, same bans as game number one. Other side, similar again. Maokai and Elise that we saw in game one. But this time they do decide to get rid of the Zillion. Leaves Alistair opening, which says us was first picking if we look backwards yeah. a little bit. Also left Fizz open, which is going to be a first pick by Rocket. So it is. it explains the ban from Fnatic then in game one. Because uh, clearly Rocket now feels Fizz is first pick worthy. And it's... It is the only assassin we really see Overpower perform on, but once he actually plays it, he always does it really well. Very passive, the Overpower style in the start, but then as soon as he has items, he starts split pushing. Like, he needs the Hourglass, he needs the Void stuff, and he will start killing people in one-on-one, -on -one. and he always runs Teleport on the fist, so they have this double Teleport threat normally. Let's see if he does it here. So for Fnatic, then, we talked about maybe you have to look towards Seliver here. He's a big player. Instead of banning, they actually first pick the Cogmore. Take that away from him. They take Nami again, as they did in game number one. But Rockout are just saying, do we just run with a similar lineup? Kazakhs worked a treat for Jankos in game mm -hmm. one. Yep. Nidalee was a strong pick for Zazas as well. Why change something that's not broken? Exactly. And we saw the chase potential in every single team fight. When they got Fnatic low, they just kept chasing, kept landing the slows, and picked up even more kills and really snowballed the game. On Fnatic's side, however, this, this is more what I expected from them when they first picked Nami in the last game, to go for a very strong lane setup. Now you have one of the best poke lanes. You can out-sustain people, you outrange them. You have so much poke in this lane here, 2v2. And therefore the Nami really makes a lot of sense. In game one, first picking Nami and then go for the lane swap. Yes, okay, they wanted to have the Twitch. You can then give him the E from Nami and speed him up and you could kind of like sneak, sneak, up, sneak up on people and kill them. Still, it was a little bit weird with the first pick Nami, and I like this a lot more. So strong dual lane now from Fnatic here. Can potentially look for even more teamfight-based oh. champions, like a Swain. And there he is. Swain coming into this one. We've been hearing the rumors, of course. We saw Swain actually being played already in that top lane uh, last week. Unicorns of Love. Unicorns of Love it was that played it, and it was terrifying, actually. Yes. Syndra as well. So Peke decided Syndra, despite me having problems a little bit later on into the game, very strong for controlling the lane early on. See how he does here against Zazas. Yeah, and again, with all the mid lane bans, Khan has to go down the list a little bit. So Syndra once again was good in the laning phase, set up some nice kills, but his team fighting positioning was not good enough. And he was the guy who got caught out of position a few times. He was the, one of the reasons they lost the early team fights and fell very far behind. And this win pick here, actually uh, into a Nidalee. lead. Swain is a very, very strong laner, and it's not a lane matchup I've seen for a long time. So I'm really looking forward to see what's going to happen, if it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Swain always had one of the issues that if you do lane swap on him, he's pretty useless at farming the jungle. So he kind of needs this one-on-one -on -one lane to get his items. He often needs the Rod of Ages, Hourglass we see on Swain, because he needs to get in the face of people, he needs to have some defensive stats as well. But then he can become a real pain. So, it was Tristan that Sale ever went for. If we look back to the quarterfinal once they decided, okay, we can't let him have Cogmore anymore. We have to get rid of that one. Tristana and the Corky were the two choices that he went for. Over for Fnatic, Cyanide not going to get his hands on the Elise. They banned that themselves. Kazakh's gone out, decided he doesn't want to play Jarvan this time around, going for Elise. Uh, no, not Elise, Evelyn. Evelyn, which is what yeah. champion is. And always one of Cyanide's main champions. But they're on Rocket side here. The Tristana pick might even be better for them because they can now really fast, put, fast push towers in the late game where they will have Fizz in one lane split pushing, they can have Nidalee in, a, in another lane, and then you have Selva sitting in the mid lane, static shift, clear the waves pretty fast, get down to a tower and then with Tristana, pop your Q and you can just milk the towers really, really fast here. So Rocket really looking to do this 1-3-1, one, one, which also explains the Evelyn pick on the side for... Uh, for Fnatic here, because she's one of the best junglers against this split push, because you don't really know where she is. You can't constantly, or well, if you can keep constant deep wards in the jungle, you can often spot her out. But then late game, when you keep split pushing there, and she's stealthing up on you, and quickly turn it into a 2v1, where you expect it to be a one-on-one, -on -one, is where Evelyn really can shine and shut down a split push. So there's a very strong pick here for Sanad, and we have seen him time and time again play it. And we even seen Fnatic first pick it in the Super Week, two games in a row. Also, just want to touch on the fact that Sawa is playing another new champion for him, 
I think traditionally in the past, so as I don't know the exact facts on this <laughs> one, so I might just be making it up somewhat, a little bit, maybe, that when he brings something new, his first games always seem to catch people off guard, yeah. and he does very, very well with them. Well, we've also seen him do pretty poorly in the very first games, and people are always like, why are you playing this champion? And he keeps playing it, and then all of a sudden it works, and everyone starts playing it. But yes, he tends to be the guy who always pulls out the new stuff, unexpected. Again, Swain against Nidalee is not a matchup I've seen before, so I hope we get one-on-one -on -one lanes to see who's actually going to be the strongest. Well, let's find out if we'll get one-on-ones or one of those lane swaps will come in as we head into game for match number two here between Fnatic and Rockat. Let's not forget the scoreline 1-0 to Rockat as they move over to the blue side. And they're just two wins away from going into the grand final of playoffs, but more importantly, would be the first team to qualify for the 2014 yep. World Championship. If I'd have told you that that was going to happen at the start of the year, you would have probably called me a bit of a madman. Well, just remember... Well, just go a few weeks back, actually. Rocket ended as number six True. in the EU LCS. They were the lowest seed going into the quarterfinals. Then they destroyed Super Hot Crew. And that's why they're sitting here at Gamescom. Just won the first game. Vandom once again, wants to log into Thresh, don't want to play Morgana into Nami. <laughs> and why would you if you can just land hooks left and right and save people with your lantern? Well, that's it, right? If you, you know, you look and we can talk about lane counters all day long. But the counter to everything is landing every single hook later on into the game. And that's something that Vander has definitely excelled on. In the first match that we've seen, we've seen Stranger Swings in Best of fives, though, as you see a scan coming out there. The sweeping lens taken by Overpower here at level one. We'll clear out that ward on the top side of Fnatic's jungle. We'll see if that forces any reaction from Fnatic. Actually, it looks like their uh, Rocket are going to just be backing away from this one. That Kazix will end up moving over, or maybe not. Now he's stepped forward once again, but well, with losing that ward, Fnatic are having to defend it off a little bit, and there is a Peke Ward onto the uh, ramp. Rockout just back away to blue. Yeah, and you can't really, when it's you, only the jungle and the top lane doing it. Often we see it when people lane swap, and you send the dual lane in just to be more people. We will get standard lanes. We actually saw both Vander and Salivar take a long way around their own jungle while pinging it. They were like, okay, they don't want to give away the fact there could be a ward in there, or if Fnatic were waiting at their own red off. They didn't want to risk face taking him, so took the long way, played it very safe. And it's now down this bottom lane, early pushing it. Trying to get the level two as fast as possible and potentially set up a hook for Vander. Oh, well, should be hitting it here fairly shortly. Let's oh. see how this one Needs works three more, out. Uh, Needs to go aggressive, yeah. Yeah, Needs this one and the then next wave. And then yellow start, trying to do as much damage as he can back onto Vander here. Auto attacks coming out. Get him low enough so that even if he does land the hook, he'll be scared of going in. There's the flate onto yellow start to offer a bit more damage back. One more minion and they get level two. Um, huh. Well, well Celebrant does. <laughs> Celebrant does. Vander will get it with the end of this wave. Let's be safe on that one. There we go, level two, and you see that Fnatic have already just backed straight away onto the tower. Yeah, and it's one of the worst feelings down the bottom lane when you know, okay, they're gonna get level two, we have to just go back to our tower and wait for the minions to arrive, and then we can stop picking them up. Didn't do uh, much of a difference here. Reckless now instantly as Fnatic actually at level 2 are looking to trade now. Remember, they do have the heal for Yellowstar. While Vander will only have his Relic Shield to try and keep uh, himself and Celavar sustained. And that's a kind of minion. Yeah, that was a minion there, Vander. But look at this, Jankos, the first blood master of the European LCS, trying to get involved on this bottom lane. They've got oh, no idea on I mean, Yellowstar. Exhaust goes down. It's an early flash. The bubble actually came in onto Vander as well. Good try. They almost lost Celebar as that went down, though. Yeah, there's a lot of damage being traded here between the 280 carries, and then Celebar switched his damage over to Yellowstar, while Reckless just kept hitting Celebar throughout all the... Well, all, I'm saying, like, the one-second fight we had before the flash out, but still, got a few extra auto attacks on him. Did have to use the flash from Yellowstar, though. Very fast reactions here. And the still, thing is, honestly, this was almost in favor of Fnatic because yeah, Celebar was forced to go back to base. That was exactly my next point. The funny thing is, it was Rockout that orchestrated that gank, and it's Rockout who have to send their AD carry early out of lane and will fall 12 CS behind. I almost really counted that completely wrong again, which wouldn't be the first time either. There's another bubble coming in, doesn't land, and Vanda will be trying to 
clean up as much of this CS as he can while Selva finally does get himself now back into lane. And Fnatic just going to utilize that one, going, taking the recall back into base, and Reckless will come through with the workings of his phage. We still have to remember Tristana is slightly weaker in the early game. On this patch, lost uh, quite some damage actually on an uh, explosive shot at E in the early stages. And Reckless has been winning the trade. Still, Yankus. Up in his top lane now, wanna force a second flash, and it works. Nicely done there. So was wanna snare the wall. Cyanide was actually coming in as well, but he'd already started to move away from things. So flash down on the top side. No flash for Yellow Star. So Yankos, if you're just going by someone that spells alone here, has got a few opportunities to get him for another first blood. Overpower. Peke starting to move up towards level six. Both of them are around about five and a half. And Overpower with that wave now is going to be headed back home. Actually, decides to recall. I was going to say Peke had pushed that lane pretty quickly. And Fnatic he actually expected a teleport from Overpower. So it's Peke decided to pick teleport himself. So now both of the double global pressure and also Overpower won't be able to use the teleport to actually sustain himself in lane because Peke can do the exact same and therefore keep his uh, CS lead and keep pressuring him down. Expect Overpower to just instantly TP back to lane after he's been back to base. And again, it's the style of Opal. Very passive in the start. I'm not expecting him to do any kind of split pushing before he really feels like he has two, maybe even three items. Normally he would walk into the lane and take the wave, but he won't really pick any fights before he really feels strong enough. Well, so the bubble jump there down in the bottom lane. Zaz is actually going to be jumped on on this top side as well, but he goes down to half and actually manages to return a good chunk of that back onto Cyanide, and look at it, Jankos waiting here by that mid lane. Of course, neither them, because they're running teleport, have Ignite for those extra ticks of damage that could set something up. I think he just spotted him there. And, well, there's a ward in the brush, so he definitely will have spotted him now. And Jankos realizing that one, he's just going to back away. You see that level six has been hit by both mid laners. Zaza shouldn't be too far away from level six here as well. So has already hit it, and just destroying minions as you do. Yeah, so this top lane here, slight CS advantage to Zazus once he actually picks up all the farm under the tower here. Otherwise, it's been a fairly even lane, and we have to remember Source was forced to flash due to the gang from Yangus where he did lose some, uh, lose some farm. Otherwise, it's been fairly even in the top lane. Mid lane here, slight advantage for XPEC, and then the bottom lane due to the recall from Selva early on. Means actually Reckless and Yellowstar is doing well, and also you do have a Nami lane, which is very strong. You have this long range poke and sustain we always talk about. Oh, look at that. I thought Jankos was just going to wait inside the brush and try and cheekily steal that, one, uh, steal that one away. Won't need to. Actually, pulling all the way off to the back. Smites it down. Really well done there by Jankos. Timing in on that red buff nicely. And that's kind of the roles reversed. In game one, it was Fnatic that were really looking for good buff control. But it was actually very nice timing from Rocket in the sense that we had him in the top lane. Source had recalled and he was running back to lane. So Zazus was already moving to the jungle. He was there before Source could even have teleported to it if he wanted to. And therefore, he would have instantly been two members from Rocket. Also, Overpower from the mid lane was actually moving. He ignored his minion, minions in the mid lane and just ran straight into the jungle of Fnatic to make sure, in case there was a fight, he was there to help. Oh, yeah, this was about the Yeah, stunned and using his ultimate to get away from that one. Obviously, not quite as strong of an ultimate as it was previously on Kha'Zix that made you almost as unkillable as an Alistair with brief invisibility periods as well. Now, though, his bottom lane, very much pressure in there. Good sidestep by Yellow Star. 74 to 57 CS in that bottom lane. All stems from that early gank from Jankos where they took more damage than they gave out. And also goes the strong lane matchup matchup and the fact that Fnatic is actually pushing it into the tower and it's very hard for Tristana to farm on the tower because of explosive shot. It's always managed to just deny one or two CS whenever they get it into the tower. So that leaves them 14 CS ahead. Actually we did see Selva pick up the pickaxe there. Something that a lot of Tristanas, in fact most of them end up with the pickaxe first rather than the lucky few who have such a good start that they can yeah. go back with a BF sword into lane. We'll see where Silver actually decides to go with that, whether he just focuses straight on getting Infinity Edge first or whether he does what everyone else has really been doing and getting them the zeal into Static Shift. He should really get the Static Shift as the first item now and just 
keep the pickaxe like we see, especially because if you look at the side of Rocket here, where's the wave clear? Yangus can provide some, and then you have Celebar, so he needs the early static shift in case Fnatic wants to early group and start pushing down towers. If Celebar goes to Vintage first item, he won't be able to clear the waves fast enough. So I do expect him to go static shift. We have to see what happens next time he goes back. I mean, sometimes we do see them go for the pickaxe and plan on going static shift, but then suddenly they pick up like two kills and a dragon, like, okay, now I can actually instantly just complete my vintage and they do it. Let's see what he decides to do. Up in this top lane, every time Source has the chance, he just walks straight towards Zazos, pops the E and the Q, because the E gives him uh, some extra damage on the rest of his abilities, which is one of the lovely things about Swain. One of the annoying things is the fact that uh, the auto attack animation is pretty annoying, in my opinion. <laughs> that is an annoying thing. No. And I used to play a lot of Swain okay. until I started to get stomped on in every single game. I just got killed in mid lane and I stopped and, playing And him. decided to move to the support. Yeah, that was also part of it. <laughs> well, top lane actually could be a bit of a problem here for Soas. Yankos is coming yeah, in though. Really. That's what I mean. Yankos is coming into this one. Soas has already pushed quite far up the lane. Yankos is going to get around the side. Soas does have flash available though. And well, he is also Swain running through a bunch of minions, which will make sure that he stays yep. pretty healthy. But with that, Jungler shows himself in the top lane. Fnatic move with three men. It's not exactly what we could call a, an early dragon in this day and age. It's 11 minutes in. Fnatic will take the first one of the game. So... Oh, that was close, though. We have to question the gank here from Yankers. There's no healing reduction on the side of either Nidalee or Kha'Zix here to actually try and kill Source, and it was way too easy for him to just escape the gank and therefore give up the Dragon. It's a good response by Fnatic. And obviously on the side of Rocket, we have to talk about in these team fights here, as long as Celebi is there or Overpower to actually hit Soas, they will get the healing reduction on him. You have the E from Tristana, you have of course the W from Fizz to do it. But uh, that's about it. So as long as they're actually hitting Soas here in these fights, they can get the healing reduction on him. Otherwise, there is no other option. Not exactly expecting more real Normicon from either Nidalee or the Fizz. No. Maybe later on, but for now, definitely other priorities. Yeah. And not saying it's not enough to have two members who can give the healing reduction. It's just a fast point to make here. And of course, we'll make it a bit risky for Source to go in the middle of the team unless he has an hourglass to pop. So I've got some CS tools here because if you look at the bottom and middle lane, it's pretty much an identical scenario with Fnatic really storming ahead. Right, quite a chunk of gold. Top lane is very even still though, 101 to 99 as overpower. Gonna try and possibly come in behind. Well, there's wards there anyway, either way, so. Nothing really for the taking, he just went down, put a pink ward in there. There's actually a couple of Fnatic pinks down by the dragon, which of course were placed earlier when they I don't want to say snook a dragon in there. It was no, kind of yeah. obvious that that was going to happen once Again. that Yankos had showed himself in the top lane. Bottom lane is also pushing out in Rockat's favor, and that's where Yankos has gone this time. Yeah, exactly the same as always from Yankos here. Just walk into the lane, start pushing it in. We see Selvar going towards Static Shift, and hook onto Yellowstone. Oh, well, they go all in on this one. There is the exhaust onto Selvar, actually, and that will allow Yellowstar to actually get away. Again, playing it very cool, decided not to use the flash. The exhaust was enough for him, but that should give now Rockat maybe a little bit of time to get some CS back in this bottom lane. Meanwhile, Overpower struggling, really struggling in this mid lane again. Yeah, he's not able to do anything to expect here. He's just getting poked down. Every single time he goes for CS, he takes a Q to the face and takes a lot of damage for it. Will be the bottom tower again. Rocket special here. Yangus is running into the lane on Kha'Zix or Elise, push down the wave. You all have the early attacks because we are going to see the static ship for Celebar, and you just start pushing down these towers. They can now go up to the top lane and do the same because there's no dragon. It was lost before simply due to Yangus doing, in my opinion, an uncalled for gank up in this top lane and just gave away dragon for no reason. So, that was quite happy to sit back Look there. Here. Oh, this could be really bad for him though. Let's see how they can do it. Can the never move land? He will actually manage to lock them up there. Ulti comes out from Cyanide as well, but Zaza's playing it tricky. Will flash one more pounce, will do it, but Cyanide gets in range, gets the first blood. Flash Fish is going to come his way. Another Fish here. Has he got the damage? Yellow Star gets involved. The bubble actually was sidestepped, didn't manage to lock him up, and that may be it. He does get the kill. Never move comes in. Meanwhile, Peke going to be finished off by Yankos. Yankos can't get any more there in the end. He 
turns into a two for two. So Yellowstar was actually roaming from the base to this top side here to join in for the fight. And meanwhile, we had all the action going on in this top side. Yangus just jumped in onto Expector here with the red buff, killed him one on one, forced the flash as well. Make sure it's a two on two, and no tower went down on this top lane because they were busy trading for the kills. Zazas also just died in. Once again, Mr. Yankos, I would actually love to see a count on how many towers this guy is part of killing in every single game. Because now he's going to get the second one. One more hit. There it is. Oh, Vander, you might die now. Oh, the TP came through. Ulti coming in. Oh, well, he needed one more auto attack. <laughs> that would have stopped the death of Vander there, funnily enough. And in the end, didn't quite work out. There's the vote as it currently stands. 67% for Fnatic. And I expected with that top pick of, uh, of Soaz that it would. Slightly swaying. Ah. Aha. No, pretty terrible one. I'll not do that. I actually like it. I do like swaying pumps. So, bottom lane's going down. That's reckless domination. Oh, this could get very interesting. Stun's coming out. Becky, of course, only just uses ultimate, so that's off cooldown. And overpower. Is it going to go for it? Fisher's coming up in just a second. They may continue to chase through. Well, I jinxed it too early there. The fish came off cooldown, but Fnatic had already backed away. Rockat didn't want any more of it. They're taking the tower, which is something they seem to be quite happy to do. You know, trade up in kill. Yeah. Maybe behind in CS, but if you get the towers, you're doing it right. And again, it doesn't matter that Fnatic put so many wards in the jungle to spot out Jankos, because he's not running in for the gank anyway. He's just running straight into the lane, go to the minions, start wave playing them and push them into the tower and he just keeps doing it over and over and because they have three members and because Sana was elsewhere on the map, he wasn't there to respond and tower is gone. Evelyn at the same time won't really be able to go in and just like do the same kind of wave that Asuka takes anyway. At least not with the same range, it's gonna be a little more risky for Sana to do and therefore Second game in a row we see the Kha'Zix for Yankers and second game in a row where he's part of all the early tower kills. Elise is being, being banned for this exact reason to stop him from doing it. We're just doing it on a different jungler. So potentially Kha'Zix ban coming in in the next game if they really want to try and shut him down. Otherwise just give him the Elise. Well, if you get blue side, I think you've got to feel that that might be an option to be honest with you. Yeah. Ban out Kha'Zix or Elise, take the other one. We'll see about that, though. Now it all develops. There's still time for Fnatic to feel more comfortable as the fish is going to whiff off to the side. And that won't be that. Dragon, meanwhile, has just come into play. But we are going to see a quick pause here by Fnatic. Looks like Reckless or Yellow Star seem to be having a problem there, so... Get that one fixed up and we can get things back on the way. But that also gives us a bit of a chance to look at where the game is right now. 17 minutes into the game. 3 2 in kill, so fairly low scoring at this stage. I mean, depends, I suppose, what you're going to uh, compare it with here at Gamescom, especially the international wildcard. Yeah. This is definitely a low score That's if we're going to compare gonna it to that. Uh, but there's the, uh, the scoreboard for you. If you look at those three kills for Fnatic, one in the top lane, one in the jungle, one in the mid lane. Reckless not really being involved in much right now, but that's because he was just sat in that 1v1 against Selva down bottom, pushing, 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 got a CS lead, took the tower as well. Yeah, the big deal really is the fact that Fnatic has won every single lane in terms of farm. They've lost two towers because, again, Yankos was just picking up the bottom lane and the mid lane tower, but in terms of just pure CS, Fnatic is ahead in every single lane here. Yeah. And while they are also hitting kills, they also got a dragon. I mean, the global gold, and the farm simply means they do have like 2,000, 2,500 gold lead at this point, which of course they can use now for the next dragon because Rocket gave up the first dragon by Yankos running to top lane, running into the lane, look at Source and say, I can't actually kill you, I'm not sure what I'm doing here, and then run back to his own jungle and lose the dragon. Fnatic has the perfect time on it. They can set up for the next one, they have the gold lead. Looking very strong. Rod of Age is completed for Source. It's been, actually, it's been stacking up for a while now. So it's going to be almost fully stacked by the time they're going to look for the next dragon fight anyway. Athene's completed for Xpeke and Trinity Force completed for Reckless. So all their members at the moment looking very good for the potential fight. And also we have to remember Overpower and Fizz, he wants more time before he want to join these fights. He only has a Lich Bane. If he jumps in now, he's going to be a very easy target for Fnatic to burst down. He needs the Hourglass before he can really join these team fights. Yeah. So we might actually see 
Um, Rocket just give up this dragon here. Also remember Tristana with a weak mid game. Don't really want to be part of these fights around the dragon. In 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Needs to get in vintage. Static shift before she can really start joining in. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Rocket just give up the next dragon. Maybe try and trade it for the top tower. And in that way to get all the outer turrets. Or kill all the outer turrets and do what they did in the last game. And then start moving into jungle of Fnatic. Place down the wards. And maybe just keep looking for the split push here. And hope they can get the same kind of... Uh, Mistake from Fnatic as we saw in game one around their base race, which worked out so well for them. Just a quick update as well on what's actually happening here. Apparently they have a bit of a visual, uh, visual bug going on around about the dragon. It's invisible, which is uh, you know not the ideal scenario to be nope. in. I thought he might have just been reckless looking at his scoreboard and saying zero, zero, zero. That's not right. <laughs> well, he is a good AD carry, <laughs> but... Can't expect to get so many kills. It's not Holy Phoenix, who's just picking up 10 kills every single laning phase. Well, there's still time for that one. We may there see is. a vein come out later, of which Reckless has a just a, a decent KDA. 65, I believe it is. Five. 65 KDA on I've vein. seen better. I've seen better. That's a, that's a champion that you might not want to let go through <laughs> later. But guys, looks like we are almost ready to get back in. So we are going to jump in. Dragon, of course, just spawned in there. Fnatic now are all surrounding that one. Rocket, though, seem to be moving in for this one. Both top laners. Actually, that's a lie because Zazus doesn't have a TP. Rocket needs so to get this dragon does. up. They should just move away from the dragon here. There can be five members from Fnatic. Unless Zazus goes back to base now and runs straight to the dragon, so there are potentially five members. But then Fnatic can just stall it and wait for Source to push down to the next tower and get some damage on it before he teleports in here. So at the moment, Fnatic looking very, very strong to take the dragon and should be able to do it. And this is the controlled Fnatic that we were uh, expecting, to be honest, coming into this best of five. Rockat, as we mentioned before, underdog, but are definitely a team that can be Fnatic if they're on yeah. their form, if they're on their best day, which in game one, it was hard to say that they weren't. There we go, Hulk coming through after the ward will be cleared out, and Fnatic being very, very cautious about this one. Look here, Zazu's actually recalled and now ran to the dragon. Overpower's going to do the same, but he has, does have teleport, and so is doing the same. So we might actually see a 5 versus 5 here, because Fnatic didn't start it and used the teleport from Source to take it before Rocket could even react. They actually want to wait, maybe because they want to set up a fight themselves. Land a few spears, try and get in for this one. Let's see, the dragon. Already been started. Look at off. Reckless here. Fnatic, yeah, they don't have their AD carry there, which is obviously a worry for Fnatic. They've got decent vision down inside of the pit itself, so it's a case of just waiting it out, wait till both Reckless and Peke actually come over there, or maybe even make a bit of a push on that mid lane. Selva, meanwhile, is nowhere near anywhere else. And look at this, Rockart are actually moving into position to try and repeat what they did in game number one. They're going to send three men towards the inner tour, uh, turret. They're losing this one, though. This is a five-man no push. Clear. They, they have, have to zero come back. wave clear. They have to come back here. Turret is going to go down. Jankos is already recalling, but they need to hurry up because Fnatic are onto the inhibitor turret. They're going to throw the fish out just to try and stop them. Those minions still alive, though, as they go in towards Overpo. He's going to be burst down by Peke. And Fnatic will take the inhibitor turret. So Fnatic now making sure they're actually winning the base race. Five members pushing down. They only had to give up one tower in the bottom lane here. The only wave clear actually from Rocket was the fish from Overpower. He landed on Source. He stepped away from the minion, so they didn't die. And then Overpower tried to jump in. As we talked about, no hourglass. He's just going to die instantly if he tries to jump into the Fnatic members here. And Yang is oh, going for the steal. Didn't get it. Didn't get it, though. Lantern, though. He's going to lantern out of there, but can they actually get away from it? Cyanide right on top of them all. Vanda goes TV down very, very, very low. So as trying to tank up everything. Zazus is at half. Here comes a fish from the side. Overpower gets one. Can he get any more? Focus down here. Going to be finished off. He's reckless against that one. Yankos dies as well. Smoke. And they're stunned. Hit three kill. men. And that is going to be a triple kill for Reckless. And no longer does he have that scoreboard visual, but he's got three kills and two assists. Such a nice stun here by Xpeke. In the very, very end, hit three members from Rocket and then Reckless just steps in. Picks up all the kills here. Now, Fnatic, they did delay the dragon. And as soon as Rocket moved into it, they actually stepped in towards the mid lane and just start pushing it down here. Rocket wanted to try and steal it. They're only four members, but they did have teleport on Overpower. He's actually going to join in behind Fnatic here. Pick up a kill on the Sana just in a few seconds. Jumping in, gets the kill. But now, once again, easy target for Fnatic to take down. And look at the stun here from Expected. On the three members. Even gets a kill from it. And then Reckless can just pick it up. 
brilliantly done. Four for two there. And Fnatic looking very strong here in game two. 21 minutes in, eight boring kills, and an 8,000 gold lead almost. A stark contrast to game number one. Still, it's funny how we just talked about Rocket maybe looking for another base race, and then they actually do decide to base race, end up making the wrong decision this time around, because Fnatic was already pushing down with five members in his mid lane here. And that was a very smart tactical play by Fnatic, because while they were setting up the Dragon, Rocket decided to run down towards the bottom lane and move that way up towards the Dragon here. And Fnatic simply said, okay, Rick has walked around the blue buff towards the mid lane, and then all five members of Fnatic just said, don't care about the Dragon for now, let's move straight into this mid lane and start pushing it down. So. Go towards the turret, and I don't see Rockat being able to defend this one, to be honest. The wave wiped straight out there by Fnatic, and that will be another tower going down. And where are they going here? Scanning out for just in range, so steal away a blue buff. Jankos actually trying to come into that one, but we'll go over on towards Xpeke, and Fnatic at this stage can just bait Rockat to come towards Baron, I think. They're just so strong here. The mid game is looking good for them, especially because Reckless had the early Trinity Force completed. We had Athenes, Fox Pekke, and Source, of course, with the Rod of Ages, while Tristana don't, don't want to fight in this mid game. And the same goes for Fist, because you need more items before you can really be part of these team fights. So Fnatic were just in a perfect situation to set up the Dragon, and Fnatic, oh sorry, and Rocket felt like they had to try and contest it. They wanted to go and fight for the Dragon, ended up being the wrong decision. They were weak at the point, and Fnatic as well could just push into the mid lane. Now just baiting the Baron. Is Vanda gonna be the guy fish chicken? Nope, Fnatic moving in. A lot of watch on both teams here. Actually spotted there. And Void Spikes coming over the top of the wall from Jankos. Actually sending uh, Fnatic back. That and the presence of Tristana and Fizz in the mid lane. They don't want to end up losing their inner turret. Just by simply being uh, Somewhat caught out there over on that side. Tidal wave coming down. Ulti from Cyanide as well. He's going to walk into the boat. They switch over towards Zalus. And look at Soas. He's right in the middle of them. Zonia's running. Still doing the damage of his ultimate. The fish will stop Cyanide chasing. And I think Fnatic here. Will they get any more? Oh, about dodging all the damage. And a little bit lucky maybe there. Split second later and he would have been hit and killed by Peke. But that allowed Fnatic now to back away. The question is, do they trust themselves to do Baron? I don't think they do. No, they want to play it safe here. Only Opa was really low from the last engage. But you also see the hourglass pop by Zor. As soon as he gets the healing production, pop the hourglass, and you just wait it out. So you don't drop too low. And now Fnatic, though, staying around this Baron. will actually lose the pink ward now around the Baron, but can just easily go back to base, buy some new ones, place them, and try and set up the exact same trap there before. Because again, they are still stronger at this point. Not only just by the goalie, but also just purely on the champion. So they just need to keep looking for fights here. Possibly even the open inhibitor. Well, Zazas is actually pushing top lane. He's going to be forced to recall out of this. They managed to get the stun onto Overpower. No follow up, though. They want the base. There's the fish coming out. It will land on Cyanide. Knocks him up. Hook actually following through, but no chasing there. TP from Soas. He went back to base to heal himself. But yeah, this inhibitor is surely going to go down. Soas actually going into the middle. Cell of the will be focused. Cyanide gets that kill. And where is Jankos? He's had to back away. And you can see him recalling there on the top side. One man down. Fnatic can now go to Baron. Moving straight up towards Baron here. Telebot is ready for power in just a second here. So there will be two Telebots from Rocket. But they're gonna need the AD carry. He's not gonna spawn in time. He's gonna have to run from base even after he spawned. So Fnatic. And the sneaky tricks here. Look at Xpeke casting spells into the Baron Pit so Rocket actually brings the Baron has been Wow, and gets this stone on towards Zazas. That was sensational stuff, honestly, from Peke. Tricking them into it. Reminiscent of the Clairvoyance level one brush trick that we saw from Fnatic all those years ago by now. And Rockout baited completely into that one. Fnatic, though, not going to stick around. No, once again, Rocket actually stops the Baron. They do have to give up a kill. They stop the Baron, however. Not really a lot they can actually do because, well, okay, Dragon is actually spawning in four seconds, so should be able to pick up a Dragon here, get some gold, then actually see the timer. So at least they do give up kills, trade it for the Dragon, stop the Baron, Fnatic, however. 
does have their inhibitor down, can go back to Baron, set it up once again. I suppose the good thing here in this scenario for Rocket that it is that middle inhibitor that's gone and not bottom lane, for example, where they then have to run a lot further away from Baron to start clearing those out. Fnatic, though, have already moved in. Are they going to start it off this time around? They've got a lot of vision there. There's not much on Rock outside, so they need to be a little careful, probably checking with the Lantern before they go in. And Fnatic... <laughs> I don't think that same trick's gonna work twice in a row. No, but again, it's still gonna force Rocket to move into the Baron, teleport here from Overpower or Zazas. Let's see what it is. It is actually Overpower Zazas already at the Baron. Celebar, however, just took a massive beating from Expect here. And he's now very, very low. Yeah, Jankos also down to about half HP. Peke forced to flash away though as Overpower had joined in thanks to that teleport. And Fnatic again get control over the river. Red buff will be going over onto Reckless. He's currently, by the way, 4-0-3. Really very solid game on this Cogmot. There's another scan out, we'll reveal that one more. There's another one just around the corner. And Fnatic won't be spotting out at this stage. However, there is also a blue buff up for grabs. If there wasn't that fight for the ward where Rockout reveal themselves. There's Teleport for Xpeke, he wants to get his own blue buff. Instead of actually joining in here. But now at least he can go down to this bottom lane and push it out as well. There's already a big weeping build up, so, so Rocket needs to send Zazas to the open. He's the only guy with Teleport ready, because Opa used it before, where Fnatic actually started the Baron. And they're looking now to push down. This top lane here, so 4-1 from Fnatic, trying to split up Rocket here and force Zazas to go down to this bottom lane, otherwise the tower is going to die. Well, they might even just give that one up and look for a five versus four. There's a hook. It's a minion, though. Good guy. Just minion. in front of Soas, who will get his ultimate run in there. And in the end, I think Peke is taking this tower down bottom. I can't really see how Rockat are going to stop that one from happening. In fact, they are stepping forward. Will they be able to get in? Nice never move will land. Stop Vanda from chasing him, but Overpower coming from the side. The fish will connect onto Cyanide. There's a TP on the top side there, though. Well, it's going to be Peke joining the fight, and just like that, Rokka decide they can't actually fight this one with Peke now coming in. They're going to lose that bottom tower, and they may be in trouble. Oh, another two-man stun! Yanko survives that time, but will it be enough to keep them and that tower safe? There is Soas diving right into the middle of them. Ultimate running, Tori goes down for the pushback here. There is Fizz right into the middle. They managed to kill off Reckless. Cogmore down. Can they get any more? They're not even going to try. Well, that was beautiful play by Overpower. Really surprised Reckless. He had the flash as well. Overpower just flashed onto him, killed him. I'm not sure if he actually Eve flashed with it. We're just going to have to see if we do get a replay of it. Still, Rocket wanted to engage, forced to teleport from Xpeka here. The tower did go down the bottom lane, but he couldn't actually push on to the next one. And then they just wanted to go back to base, try and land the hook here, force Fnatic to fight under the tower, which did actually work. So what was under the tower here, took some damage from it. And then Overpower just with Baron. So let's just see once again, he goes in. Actually just flash cues him and kills him, and Reckless is not ready for it. He did a flash himself, just couldn't react in time. Almost took a couple more with him there at the end, though. The Carthian surprise. Baron, of course, was, after all that, still in its pit. Let's have a look and see if Rockat are now feeling confident enough to go to it. You have to feel, I mean, it's a 7,000 gold difference, obviously. Sneaking a Baron through would really bring Rockat back into this one. However, Fnatic item-wise are still nicely ahead. And obviously, Fnatic want the fights themselves. They were quite happily went under that inhibitor turret in the top lane. So they've got two open inhibs now. And Rockat can't make that same mistake as before where they were caught out of position or, or made the decision well, really to here. go down towards the bottom lane. And look at it, AD carry, support, jungler are inside the jungle and they need to get back towards the rest of the team here. So as is just going to stop them from coming right at Fnatic and Reckless will start taking chunks out of the inhibitor. Are they going to be able to defend this one? Zaza stepping forward, Overpower is now there as well, the fish is available. Landed it, I think, pretty successfully two or three times just onto uh, Cyanide, who yeah. steps away from the team, takes the damage without too many problems. Oh, Jankos caught out by Soas on the top side. That, that surely 
man. Will it be? Actually, no, they're going to go aggressive. The yellow star almost been taken down. Had to use the Mikhails on himself. There's the hook on Cyanide as well. The fish does come through. Again, it lands on Cyanide. Not enough damage, and the in him goes down. And you do see once again how hard it is for Opal actually to engage in these fights. He wants to be able to flank around at least until he has the hourglass completed. But because Fnatic are the ones making the place, pushing into the base, then he can't flank around him. He can't get on to Rectus here. So he had to jump Yellow Star. He survived. Used the DFG as well. And in the end, another fish onto Cyanide. So it's very hard for Opal again to join these fights. And the reason I keep talking about him because he's the guy who's supposed to kill Rectus in these fights here. Literally, Kha'Zix, we saw it in the last game. It is not the combo where you just like instantly jump the back line, like you poke, 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 and then once people drop low, then you go in and try and finish them. Opal is the man to go in and assassinate Reckless. He's building towards our glass. It will still be a while before he actually gets it, especially because he's not been getting a lot of farm. Let's see here though, Yangus want to take a fight. Well, he's got Overpower coming in, flash away from Reckless and Overpower. Not able to keep chasing through and Reckless. Could have been a little bit different if he didn't actually see him the second that he just hit that ultimate. Catch the surprise, surprise might have been a little better for him as Jankos here gonna have to jump away. The bubble from Yellow Star already flying in his direction. But now Fragon started off. Will be finished off as well by Fnatic. Rockat not even gonna challenge for that. No, and Opa was like, should I push the top lane here? And nope, it's gonna be four members moving after the dragon to try and kill me. And he wants to save his flash here. Oh, sorry, his teleport. Didn't want to have to run through bush and use it. So Fnatic once again now, inhibitor gone. They picked up the dragon, taking all the gold on the map they can. Back to baiting Baron. Double teleport ready for Rocket, so they can apply pressure to, two, to the two side lanes. And just uh, whoever is down the bottom side can teleport in, in case we do see a fight break out here. And we might just see Fnatic try the exact same, where they actually play some pink wards, walk into the Baron pit and just sit there and wait for Rocket to check. There's a scrying op on uh, Celebar, however. So at least the first time around it won't work, but then the second time, Rocket will be forced to move inside here and potentially get engaged on. Blind hook coming through the side there. They got vision of Yellowstar though. Just takes the traps for the team. And the scan inside of Baron Pit will reveal one ward. The pink ward at the front will reveal the second one. So Rockat's vision of Baron is now gone. What a fanatic gonna do. They were trying to sneak around the side there. Good ward over the top will actually reveal them again. Going for second inhibitor here. Tower yeah. is already dead in the top lane. So they want to get two inhibitors down before they even look towards the Baron again. Trying to stun up Jankos, Cyanide also had started the flank around him to get on the opposite side. Stop from retreating, there's the never move, doesn't land it again. And Fnatic now again going to step towards the inhibitor, Reckless hammering away. Now Overpower Overpower coming in, who's he going to go for? Ooh. Reckless is going to get knocked up here, Overpower getting exhausted though. Which means that he just can't chase through, so big ulti down here for Rockat. There was his chance here, but also we saw Yellowstar just flash exhaust him before he could even jump in towards Reckless here. And so he wants to go for the fight. Oh, he's got hook, but is it really the man that you really want to hook and bring in? Overpower at the back, trying to get in. Can't actually do much with that. Jankos being focused there by Soaz. And there is the second inhibitor going down. Super minions, a big wave of them as well, coming down mid. Yeah, and Celebrate dead for 40 seconds here. Fnatic moving straight for the Baron. So Overpower this time around could finally flank around here. They throw his ultimate, but he will land on yellow side and flash away from the rest of the team and also into range of exhaust here. Now he's uh, being the man scouting the rest of Fnatic once again. That was a little bit too early. Well, I'm trying again. Same line actually. Tried to do that a second time. That didn't really work out. The fish thrown in. <laughs> Lands on to Soas. Do all that much to him. Just separates from the rest of the team. So Fnatic here. Actually looking like they want to back away. Is that because of how low Soaz is at this point? Knowing that Celeva respawned and he's coming in. Yeah, I mean, Soaz could have gone back and then teleported in if they were starting the Baron. But once again, they were just trying to set up a pick. They didn't get it, so now they lost all the time, but it could have been on Baron. Oh, Opa actually jumping for Soaz here. And might not be done yet. Void Spark's coming back in. Fnatic, not willing to give up the position that they've got here on Baron. And actually, you're going to start it off. So, Baron kicked off here by Fnatic. Will they stick to There's it? There's the TP from Soas. Yellow Star 
up at the front. And that Baron is going down here. I'm not sure that Rockhand can actually get in range. I mean, two of them aren't really close. They are going to kill off the other star there. It's Sullivan that gets that. Baron's still not done. There it is. Finally finished off. So as we'll get that. The fish, though, inside of the Baron pit will actually be uh, cleansed away. And that now is so has been focused. Got ulti from Cyanide in the front. Yankos down to less than half. So has exhausted up inside of the pit. Banda is going to go down. They try and turn this one around, but Yankos does get a kill. That's a two for one in favor of Rockat. And they're all inside the pit with no way to get out. Only Sanat has flash ready. Trying to recall, that's not gonna happen here. You have to take the fight. Or you just see what they're going oh, 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 the ulti coming in. Overpowered also full. Sonja's used. Sanders goes down. Jankos has popped his ulti to try and escape from things. Gets away from the stun. And just like that, Fnatic trapped up. And oh. Reckless can't quite get around there. But look at the base. The base is actually going down here. Super minions hammering away on the Nexus turrets. Yankos is doing circles around the jungle. And now Reckless is actually starting to move in. They're going to take that second inhibitor down again. There's still 20 seconds on the three dead men. And look at it. He's going to fall here. The super minions have taken down and both Nexus turrets. The two inhibitors gone now. Nexus turrets are gone. You got the Baron. You won the fight. Full credit to expect. he's been playing absolutely amazing in this game here. Once again, double stun he lands, nukes down Celeborn instantly. And they were stuck in the Baron pit, they couldn't get out. Four members from Rocket moving in, double stun, Celeborn you're dead. And then Opal tries to jump in again and again, and just end up dying. I'm not even sure what he's building right now. Didn't actually go for the large rod here, towards the Hourglass. Not sure if he's... He want to get some, get a void stuff, but uh, it's not really going to help him at this point. Especially also with QSS for Reckless. So if he actually does land the perfect ulti, QSS fish is just dropped on the ground, and he can step out of it. So we'll see this placing a ward. Rocket is trying to do the fanatic trick. I was going to say it's a bit of a mirror of our last game, where Rockout were in fanatic shoes. Fanatic. Actually pinging to back off. Look at this though, starting to now move in. And well, they've got a Kog'Maw, there they go. They're going to actually go towards Soas. He will just Zonya through everything. Tidal Wave comes through, gets the knock-up on towards Overpower. There's one kill. Yankos tries to jump away, pops the ultimate, but will be finished by the double of Reckless. Three of them did escape, but two are dead for 50 it's seconds. It's going to be game. It's going to be game. There's no Nexus turret here. Five members from Fnatic pushing in. He's have to walk past this tower and go straight for the Nexus. So Fnatic then moving towards the base. Rockat trying their best to hold on to it. Stun actually did land on to Celeber, but he was already mid-air from the rocket jump. It won't matter. They focus the Nexus and Fnatic come back to win game number two and tie us up here in the semi-final. So Rocket this time around tries to get a bit of a split push comp. They first picked Fizz. It was left open, was banned in the first game by Fnatic. Not sure if they didn't want to risk Fnatic picking it, therefore they took it in the very, very, as the very first pick in the game. And while Opa did get some kills, it just never paid off because Fnatic, they got the lead, they could keep forcing team fights. Rocket never got to the point where they could actually split push. And you see that a distinct difference between Rocket after game one and Rocket after game number two. As I said, scratching his head, really not an effective game for him. Soas had him pinned to his turret yeah. pretty much the entire time in that top lane. If you compare the two, 230 TS to 237, actually a pretty even number considering how wild that game really was. But the Nidalee in game number two just didn't have any impact, had no time to split push. Nope. Just didn't work. Swain looked really, really strong against Nidalee in the one on one, even though the flash was forced early by Yankers onto Soas. Yeah. He still. Kept the pressure going, he won the laning phase. And again, if you look at game one from Fnatic, where they first picked an army, we were expecting okay, strong lanes and they log in Twitch and Alistar, so they had two weak side lanes and they went for the lane swap. This time around though, strong bottom lane, once again with Nami as well, early picked as support. You pick in the Swain top lane, a very, very strong lane, and of course you have Syndra, uh, Syndra in the mid lane for Xpeke. So you're just winning lanes all around and they used it because they got ahead in farm, they got the dragons and they got all the kills. And again, also for Xpekis, Xpekis in this game here, the amount of two three-man stuns he landed in these team fights were just fantastic to watch. Yeah. And he just set up so many kills for the rest of the team. And we can also, you know, we often talk about Jankos as the man that gets Rockat going. Funnily enough, in this game, 
the second time that he visited the top lane, Fnatic were yeah. like, okay, that's a free dragon for us. They just went yeah. down there, took it. And then again, two or three fights around Dragon that they just cleaned up on, including that brilliant Peke three-man stun that Reckless got his triple kill from. Yeah, we just had to pause, and we were talking about how Fnatic at the moment are a lot stronger in this mid-game here than Rocket. They're in position to take the Dragon. Rocket stayed around, wanted to try and fight for the Dragon, which actually ended up costing them pretty much the entire game because that's really where they fell so far behind. Mm. They tried to fight for Dragon first, ended up actually both teams splitting up. Fnatic went mid lane, took two towers. Inhibitor turret went down in the mid lane. Rocket took one in the bottom lane, and then Fnatic went back to the Dragon. Got it, killed Rocket as well, and got a big, big goal lead at that point. So Rocket tried to team fight early on. They wanted to get a lead so they could start split pushing. They wanted to get some kills on Overpower, some kills on Zazu, so they could be like these one-on-one -on -one monsters that they can be on Fizz and Italy. It just never got to the point because they fell so far behind. Then Fnatic just kept forcing team fights over and over. And Swain, in a team fight when he's like your front tank, is just so annoying. He just walks straight into Rocket every single time. And they were pretty unable to really deal with him. Yeah. I think he went once, low once or twice, and then just said, okay, I've got Zonyas now, so <laughs> just going to sit there and heal up whilst you can't do anything to me. 1-1, one, one, all tied up here in the best.